If there was ever a laptop that I was a fan of, it would have been the original Razer Blade. And not the original Razer Blade with that weird display touchpad thing or whatever it was. The one that got rebranded as the Razer Blade, or I'm gonna call it the Blade 14 because the Blade 14 did something that nothing else did at the time. It combined that sleek MacBook Pro appearance with legit real world gaming performance. And sure, it did come at a cost. Thermals weren't as good as if you'd gone with a much larger laptop and obviously performance did leave a little bit on the table. Oh, and they were really expensive. But the truth remains that nothing else did the same thing. Nowadays, there are a lot of competitors for the blade and some of those deficiencies in the older blades have come back to bite them. So there have been reliability issues that we've actually reported on and well, I think that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of the biggest problem. But can AMD save Razer's 14 inch laptop? That is what they're trying to convince me of today. Let's take a look at this thing. Inside the new Razer Blade 14 is an AMD Ryzen 5900HX processor. So that's an eight core, 16 thread CPU that'll boost up to 4.6 gigahertz, should make it pretty darn ideal for gaming. And you'll also find an RTX 3060, 3070, or 3080 GPU with a total rated graphics power of 100 watts. That is across the board. So it seems to me that the sweet spot for this laptop is probably gonna be the 3070, but Razer are sent over the 3080 model for me to check out. First, let's take a look at IO. So we've got our power plug, USB-A, USB-C. This is not going to be Thunderbolt because this is of course an AMD based machine. Uh, we've got our headphone microphone combo jack, another USB type A, another type C, HDMI 2.1. You can do up to, I think it's 5K with display stream compression at 120 Hertz or 4K at 240 Hertz off of one of those. Kensington lock and that's actually very respectable IO for a laptop of this class. Now, obviously, they made some compromises and we're gonna find some of those when we open it up. One of the compromises supposedly isn't cooling. So they've got two of these, I think it's 88 blade fans. I don't know when, how many blades you have in your fans became like a big penis measuring contest between all the laptop manufacturers, but uh, <laughs> Razer seems to be right up there with the, uh, with the leaders in the pack as far as that goes. There you go, you can do it. Oh, wow, look at that, that is really easy to get off. Not that you're gonna be upgrading anything because yes, my friends, that is in fact what I was talking about. Razer doesn't offer pretty much any configurability on these machines and this is why, there just isn't any. You're limited to single-sided SSDs, so that means practically speaking, you can only go up to about two terabytes with modern M.2 SSDs. The RAM is soldered to the motherboard under this enormous vapor chamber. This cooling system though, this is pretty cool. So this is an enormous vapor chamber that covers the CPU and GPU and leads to these two thermal exchangers here. And then these are these crazy 88 blade fans. Who decided that you should have slightly more blades on the inside and slightly more on the outside? I call this move YOLO grab. Mm. Okay, well, the YOLO grab didn't work. Uh, so it's 61.6 watt hour battery. Razer claims 12 hours of battery life with an RTX 3080. Um, well, that's with the screen at 35% brightness and the uh, keyboard backlight turned off. Oh my God, this vapor chamber bent. Um, one moment, please. Razor, they put the frag in fragile. <laughs> now that, that is some hardware pornographic material right there. Do you deny it, David? No, not even a bit. Okay, so we got 16 gigs of DDR4 memory. This is from Micron. Uh, there's our 5900HX CPU. Here's our power delivery for that. 
My God. Look at the VRMs for the CPU and GPU. This is like every square centimeter of the inside of this machine is jam packed solid. Thank you to today's video oh, wait, sponsor, wait, 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 Dbrand. Wait, 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 wait. Dbrand is the global leader in device customization, offering things like device skins, cases, screen protectors, dark plates, masks, and much more. Dbrand is a serious company focused on quality and customer service, and today they have launched a new product. They launched the Apple AirPods Pro Grip Case. Uh, it's two millimeters thick, super grippy, and offers drop protection with military grade impact resistance. It comes with a lanyard and it's available right now. Ow, ow, ow. Did D-Brand put you up to this? Yes. Oh my God, they're all actually full of AirPods Pros. <laughs> they're everywhere. What do you got? Ow. <laughs> How many do you have? Ow. Interestingly, even though Razer ships with this power adapter, you actually can charge the laptop. They claim in about two hours using a USB-C power delivery capable charger. So I'm assuming it was down to a cost decision to go with this out of the box rather than one of those. Mind you, this is already like a, what is it? Starts at $1,800 machine. Yeah, it's not exactly cheap. And then this particular one is $2,800. I still do like the Razer keyboard. It's kind of like seeing an old friend after a long time. Hey, what the? Okay. Microsoft's got to figure that out. I have no idea what I just input there. No idea at all. You know, whatever you might think about it personally, I love Razer's keyboard. I mean, you can't argue with the results. 118 words per minute at 95% accuracy on a, key, on a laptop. There's a couple things I'm not a huge fan of. There's the split up and down arrow keys, but then unlike some of their previous efforts, this one really is so thin and they've done a great job of increasing the size of the touchpad that I, it's, it's a lot easier for me to forgive. And the 3070 and 3080 models come with a 1440p 165 hertz display. We tried these out a little while ago on some prototype ASUS laptops on short circuit. You guys can check out that video if you want, but in a nutshell, they're freaking awesome, these displays. Cool, I don't need to know calibration. I've got the greatest mouse pad ever from lttstore.com. Oh cool, so you can have like a shift key that will uh, allow you to assign secondary functionality to your whole keyboard. Oh, I should mention the display on the higher end models, they boast up to 100% uh, coverage of DCI-P3 and then on the 3060 model up to 100% coverage of, I believe it's sRGB, is that correct? Yeah. Boy, those fans are going now though, hey? Yeah. CPUs at 4.2 whatever gigahertz. Running at a casual 100 FPS, nightmare quality, 1440p, or ultra nightmare, excuse me. This is one of those devices where this, the noise of the fans really does affect the enjoyment of the speakers. So you guys know what I'm comparing this to, for anyway, daily driver consideration at least, is the uh, Flow 14 from Asus. So this is like a convertible with a 1650 in it, if I recall correctly. I think the 3070 model is probably your sweet spot though. Ah, oh, touchpad, it's good size. That's something that's kind of killing me about the Flow 14. Um, touchpad's really small by comparison, look at this. Ugh. Yeah, that's a pinner touchpad. And it doesn't feel very good either, whereas this one feels good. All right. I think that's pretty much everything I can say about it from a first impression standpoint. Considering like how not even that much bigger and heavier it is compared to an ultra portable device with a 1650, like good Lord. It's noisy though, you know, it's still a blade. Subscribe to Short Circuit for more impressions videos like this one. Well, we don't usually do them quite like this, but this is just a very interesting product. Sometimes though.